Howdy out there, fishing friends. We get a ton of questions here, at least our CSRs do here at Omnia Fishing, about what chatterbait to choose. There's a lot of chatter out there, no pun intended, about the, the ever famous chatterbait. I think we can all agree on one thing. If you're a avid bladed jig user, that Z-Man still kind of leads the pack in that. They own the patent where the blade actually strikes the head and they've done the best job of kind of filling out the family of chatterbaits, in my opinion, to kind of service all your needs. Now, you can simplify things for yourself, and that is if budget's no option, just go for the best. And the best of the best is still the evergreen jackhammer, in my opinion. Uh, there are other really good bladed jigs out there for different reasons, and there are even some different reasons to fish the other ones in the Z-Man family of chatterbaits. But the evergreen jackhammer still remains right now king of the hill when it comes to bladed jig fishing. And for a couple different reasons. It's the quality of the hook in it. The hook keeper is the best on the market as far as a bladed jig style uh, keeper for the back ear bladed jig. The blade itself, whatever it is, the combination of the thickness of the blade, the shape of the blade, and what's positioning on the head, it really, really, really uh, is effective at slow speeds, falling. Whenever you cast this thing out and the minute you start, turn, you engage your reel and you turn your handle, you can feel that blade strike in the head, which is very different from a lot of the competition out there. Seems like a minor thing, but a lot of times you find yourself getting bit at the end of the cast or on the initial fall of when your bait falls in. And that's something that the jackhammer does extremely well. When ripping it through grass, that blade is constantly contacting the head even with grass all around it and then the blade getting stuck in the grass and all that so you'll find that most tournament anglers or most you just avid anglers out there are going to lean on the jackhammer day in day out as the number one bladed jig choice out there on the market today so as far as chatterbaits go when you think i want the best of the best you usually just can get away with just getting jackhammers now, there's a whole bunch of sizes in the jackhammer, a 3 8 they have a half ounce version, a three quarter, and all the way up to an ounce and a quarter here. Uh, why would you fish those? 3 8 ounce, this is something I resisted for a long time just because of the price of jackhammers. I always just bought a ton of half ounces. And the reason being I buy all the half ounces was because it was the most versatile of all the four sizes I just mentioned. This one can be fished in a little bit deeper water. It can be fished shallow. You can keep your rod tip up and wind it in really shallow water, keep it up above the grass, but you can also dive it into the grass a little bit if you want. So if you're not sure about where you're gonna be fishing with this or what the vegetation's like in the body of water you're gonna be targeting, half ounce is, just think of that as all around, I'm gonna use this thing, I'm gonna throw it shallow, deep, wherever I need to go fishing. The 3 8 is really gonna shine when you are fishing the bank. And I don't mean out 50 yards from the bank on a grass line or something like that. This is, I'm throwing this thing to the edge of the bank and I wanna reel it from an inch of water out into five foot of water or wherever it be. It's gonna stay up higher in the water column without you having to keep your rod tip kind of up in the air or reel it faster to keep it shallow. So that's why you'd run a 3 8 Three quarter, now we're starting about, I wanna wind this thing deeper in the water column. I got suspended fish around the edge of hydrilla or coontail like we have up here in the North Country in the edges of the milfoil. I want this down in the vegetation. I'm gonna let this thing sink down to a rock pile and pop it up. I'm gonna fish it more in that mid depth, even to some deeper water if I'm gonna fish it really slow. But just think about that size, that weight means what it does. It's heavier, it's gonna get down deeper. And that's why this ounce and a quarter is kind of the perfect one for offshore structure. If you've got hard structure or vegetation way offshore that's really deep, that's when you'd pick this one up. I know you've probably heard us here in, uh, at Omnia talk about the chicken a lot. It's a very popular technique up here in the Midwest and down south that's more of a preacher style jig on a ledge. This can be fished in that same manner like a jigging spoon or a preacher jig or chicken as we call it, way off on some offshore structure. So if you're fishing super deep, I'd say 15 foot plus deeper, try out that ounce and a quarter. But that kind of is the, the story behind the jackhammer. It is the best one at the blade striking the head on the fall and on the beginning part of your retrieve, the best one coming through vegetation, still making that ever famous chattering sound as the blade bangs the head. Now, why would you even entertain some of the other options there? Well, there's lots of good reasons for that. This is the original chatterbait here from Z-Man. This is still one of the best selling baits on planet Earth. The blade does contact the head very well. 
As good as a jackhammer? Almost, but not exactly. And if it's all about the details to you as a tournament angler, you might want to try the jackhammer, but these are a major cost savings over their counterpart. So you're fishing anywhere where there's a lot of pike or trash fish, I guess you'd want to call it, not pike being a trash fish. Don't hate on me, pike people. But uh, drum and different species, catfish that'll come up and kind of grab your chatterbaits and wreck them. This is a better option for you financially to run these. Uh, they do work really well. They don't have as nice a keeper on them for some of the more expensive trailers. If you're running really expensive trailers or you're burning through a lot of trailers, uh, just a cost saving version of the original chatterbait. If you're new to chatterbait fishing, great option for you to get rolling, buy a bunch of different colors and see where you land before you spend the big bucks on the jackhammers. Next up is the Project Z. Why would you run the Project Z's? In my personal opinion, and the reason why I've talked to anglers that run these is if you like fishing really heavy line and heavy rods and even braided line. These don't have a traditional snap like the other chatterbaits do. They have a closed eye on the end of the blade there that helps you tie your line to it without the risk of ripping open a snap. So if you're gonna run, let's say 20 plus pound test fluorocarbon with a stiffer rod, not the moderate rod, usually recommended to be fished with like a, a, a bladed jig. If you're running like a flipping stick or a, just a heavy, your same rod you're throwing a frog with or something like that, this is a great option for you because that uh, where you tie your line to is a lot more durable than the other options that are out there. Next up, the cross eyes. This one here has like an arky style head on it and that makes it great for skipping. And if you see, it's got a snag resistant weed guard in front of it, which will actually help it come through some cover. I look at it more for hard cover, it's dock rungs, ropes, cables, uh, hardwood uh, cover, rocks, things like that that are on the bank. And this thing can be skipped really effectively. So if you're someone who's target fishing a bladed jig, this is a great option for you without coming with that major cost of a jackhammer. Uh, you can throw this thing confidently into some seriously heavy cover. Next, the Chatterbait Mini Max. This one came out with a lot of thunder when it came out right away because I'm sure a lot of you, if you fish bladed jigs, have found yourself in scenarios where the fish will not commit to the bait. They seem to be nipping at it or biting at it and they're not committing to it. Sometimes, we're, face it, we're just fishing for smaller bass like this guy right here. Happens to me quite a bit. I find myself on a school of two pound and down fish or spotted bass, smallmouth, whatever. If you need to get bites, you need to downsize your presentation, this is a great option. I know a lot of smallmouth anglers have, found, have made this thing find a home in their boats for targeting smallmouth with a smaller presentation, more minnow-like presentation. These have shined more in open water scenarios. They have a much more subtle hunting action than their bigger counterparts here. So they're a lot better for fish that are feeding on more lifelike minnow forage somewhere, you know, from mid depth to shallow in the water column. Now we've got the big blade from Brian Thrift here. This thing has not gotten all the thunder it's, it deserves. So that's a tip for you out there. This thing is an absolute killer when it comes to extremely dirty water. When you want to make a ton of commotion, and let's say you've had some heavy rains over the last few days and a lot of muddy waters come into the system, this thing is going to get found by fish even in the dirtiest of water conditions, it will get found. Let's just think about it too. This is the same theory as a glide bait angler or a swim bait angler. Uh, when I want to target the biggest fish in a school and I've got an active school of fish and I'm throwing a traditional bladed jig in there left and right, left and right, and I'm catching kind of a mixed mash of different sizes of fish or sticking around that like two and a half, three pound range and you know there's some four pounders mixing that school, switching it up to a bigger presentation like the Big Blade could get you that bigger bite. So Big Blade, Big Bite, just think of it that way and also just think of the Big Blade as being aiding you in dirty water conditions. If you want those fish to find it, come hunt down your bait in dirty water conditions. Next up is one that gets a ton of questions, the Stealth Blade. If you're fishing this thing like everywhere you fish the jackhammer or uh, other uh, bladed jigs around the grass, you probably haven't found it to be your favorite. And I think that's why this thing didn't have the thunder it had when it came out after a little while, because I think people just saw it and thought, hey, the blade's clear, it's gonna fish like those. I didn't find that to be the case. Where this thing shines, and it does, believe it or not, have a lot of really good uh, places around the country, a lot of fisheries, a lot of 
uh, certain scenarios where this thing shines over any of the bladed jigs. And that is open water, clear water conditions, which is totally the opposite of what a chatterbait was technically designed for. This thing is going to make a minnow style bait in a real realistic presentation hunt around in the middle of the water column and cause that commotion. So think of it as places you'd fish a realistic looking crankbait. You can fish this thing and you have a much better coming through any grass that might be around like that. And you have that big single hook so that you could, your landing percentage goes way up. So especially nowadays with forward facing sonar, if you're fishing spooky fish that are suspended in clear water, try out the stealth blade for those scenarios. And lastly, we gotta talk about this one right here. This one is the new Z-Man Chatterbait Evo. This right here, when I saw it at ICAST, I heard about it, but I hadn't seen it in person. I, did, I just thought this would be another addition to a, a grow, ever-growing family of chatterbaits. And this guy right here would just do what I started out talking about, and that's just stick with the jackhammer, till I saw this thing. And I'll tell you why. As you heard me talk about the features of the Evergreen Jackhammer before, this thing's got almost all of those, just like the original uh, Evergreen version. So this one has a very advanced keeper on it. So it's got a big lead collar on it here that's very similar to one of our favorite jig heads here, which keeps minnow profiles on very well. That's that like staged, uh, bumpy little lead collar there, like the Smeltonator jig has but it's still got that wire barb there for your Elastec style plastics to keep any Elastec style plastics up in the front. But that nice thick gradual, or the, the multi-stage gradual lead collar there for your soft, sandy, salty plastics that are much softer and wanna pull down. It's got a really, really nice hook, very similar shape and sizing to the jackhammer. The head is very similar to the jackhammer's head. It does contact the head very well on the blade here, but this thing comes with a whole bunch of new different blade colors and combinations. Uh, there's some fleck in the blades here. They've been painted some really cool colors. And best of all, these things are a lot less expensive than a jackhammer. So back to what I started with, that if you got a lot of questions and budget isn't an issue, try the jackhammer, just stick with the jackhammer. If budget is an issue for you and you're getting into bladed jigs and you wanna know what the best feel like, try out this Evo. I know for me, budget's becoming more and more of an issue these days. I'm gonna be trying out a whole bunch of these Evos and a bunch of the new colors right away. So hopefully that answers a lot of questions you might have with your bladed jig fishing. Like I said, go out and try all of them for all these different scenarios, but if you're overly confused, Get yourself this new Evo. It's a great price point. And if you got a bunch of extra gift cards or bucks laying around, just go get the jackhammer.